Hey guys, let's look at a couple things in this uh, chapter. First is called signs of fractions. A couple of ways you can write negative three-fourths. This is important to what we're going to do next. You can go like this and go, oh, negative three-fourths, and just the person goes, oh, it applies to the whole thing. You can also go, well, negative three divided by positive four, and you know a negative divided by a positive is a negative, right? Okay, you can also say three divided by negative four a positive divided by a negative is also a negative. Or you can just say the whole thing's negative, whatever. Okay, knowing that, we're going to use that to solve or to add together fractions that have kind of the same looking denominators, but kind of not. And first thing let's look at is this. Just, just look at this and notice what happens, okay? If you look at this, this fraction and this fraction, two fractions here, every single term in this fraction you look over here, every single sign is different. The negative 7, positive. Plus 13, minus. 12, negative 12. Negative 4, positive 4. Let's do the math and see what happens, okay? Let's go negative 7 plus 13. Well, that's 6, right? And then 12 minus 4 is 8. We get 6 eighths. There you go. We can reduce that. It'll be wrong. Okay? Over here, we get 7 minus 13, which is negative 6. And then negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. Well, you and I both know a negative 6 divided by a negative 8 is a positive. So this entire thing is a positive. Well, it's the same thing as this. Point is, you can take any fraction you want and change every single term, the sign of every single term in that fraction, and you will not change the value of that at all. We're going to use that to solve problems like this one. So take a sec. If you need to pause, copy that down. All right, here's what we're going to do. If you look at this denominator, it looks just like that denominator, except for one thing. All the signs are different, right? This is a negative x plus 3. Well, we can go ahead, and since this is a fraction by itself, we're not going to change the value of this fraction if we change every single term in the fraction. And by changing every single term in this fraction, we're going to make this denominator match that denominator. So then we can add those together. So I'm just going to copy the 1 again, the x minus 3. Then I'm going to copy the minus. Then what I'm going to do is change the sign of every single term in that fraction. That turns into an x. That's a negative 3. And of course, I already did the negative 7a. Okay. Now we have the same denominator, right? Okay. So here's our same denominator. Now we have 1 minus 7a, which is the same thing as 1 plus 7a. And that's it. We're done. That's what we've solved that. Uh, we've simplified that fraction. All right, let's try another one. You can pause it again, copy. All right, and again, this looks very similar. Uh, 4x plus 5 over x minus 3. And you probably saw that this 3 minus x, well, that's the same thing as like negative x, you know, plus 3, if you want to look at it that way. Be a little easier. And if we change every single sign of every single term in this entire fraction, First off, we'll get the positive x, and we'll get the negative 3, just like it is over here. And what we need to do next is go negative 2x plus 3 for this, uh, for the numerator. All right? So now let's go ahead and get the like terms. 4x minus 2x, and then 5 plus 3, that's 8. All that is over x minus 3. Boom. We're done. All right. There we go. Second thing you want to do is, uh, is this section about 30, 60, 90 triangles. You need to write this down. You need to have a card somewhere um, where you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle down, and you need to have this memorized. You need to have it memorized. You're going to use this the rest of the year, and good grief, trigonometry, it seems like half the year you're finding the cosine, the sine, the tangent, and this and that of all these uh, triangles and angles that are in various multiples of 30, 60, 90, or whatever. So this you need to have memorized. This is it in a nutshell. Ready? Okay. If you have a triangle that has a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle and it's a right triangle, of course this is going to be 90. The side across from the 30 degree angle will be a value. The side across from the 90 degree angle, you'd think since 90 is 3 times 30 that this would be 3 times the 1, but it isn't. It's only twice. So this will be twice that. The, sign, uh, the side excuse me, across from the 60 degree angle, which is this one, is going to be this number right here times the square root of 3. In other words, this is a 1 times the square root of 3. 
So a lot of kids go, okay, I'm, I'm gonna memorize this. One, two, three. One, two, and then square root of three. And draw, they draw the triangle and then they just set themselves up and do the, uh, the matching, basically. We're gonna, do, we're gonna do ratios in a second. Remember doing similar triangles? Find the angle if it's a similar triangle, we're gonna do that in a second, based on this. And they're not going to give you the 30s and the 60 and the 90. They'll have the, you know, the right triangle written there, the, the 90 degree angle. They're gonna give you either the 30 or the 60, then you'll be required to fill in the blanks, basically. These are the blanks you need to be able to fill in. So get this on a card, memorize it, write it down. Each time you do one of these ratio similar triangles, go ahead and write it down. Eventually, a few weeks go by, it'll be burned into your brain, uh, and then you'll be able to do it in your head. So the rationale for why we know this is true is they'll sometimes give you, like here's a, you know, a, a triangle. It's a regular triangle. All the angles, all the sides are the same. And since we have three sides that are the same, that means the three angles are the same, which means they're all 60, right? Well, if you hack this thing in two, like that, right down the middle, okay? Both of these triangles will be the same, right? So if we ha you hack this two in half, that's gonna be a one, okay? We know that's a one, we know that's a two. The only question is, oh, what's this side? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So you have this squared uh, plus this squared gives you that squared. So in other words, here's your Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus, you know, we'll call it, you know, I don't know, b squared equals two squared. So one plus b squared equals two squared. So b squared is equal to four minus one. So b is the square root of three. And that's how they derive that, okay? You gotta memorize it though. For the side across from the 30 degree angle, is half the size of the side across from this. If you ever forget this one, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out which, what it is, but just go ahead and memorize that one, two, three, all right? These are the kind of problems you're gonna see. Use similar triangles to find X and Y, okay? So what you need to do is just go ahead and write out, and if you look at this, they go, oh, 60. And they don't give you this, but of course, you can do the arithmetic and derive that that is 30 degrees. So all you're doing is you're gonna write a similar triangle just like this, right? Here's the 30, that's gonna be a one. Across from the 90, there's your two. Across from the 60, that's one times the square root of three. That times the square root of three, boom. All you need to do now is just do your ratios, okay? And we can find, you know, uh, we can find X first since it's there, okay? And this is pretty simple. This is just like the ones we've done before. So you can go five is to two, is x is the square root of three. Or you could do five is to x as two is the square root of three. Let's just do that since it's you, okay? So we'll go five is to x, that is to that as two is to the square root of three. All right, so let's knock this back and forth here. So we got two x equals five times the square root of three. And then we need to just divide by two, divide by two, and yoink, there is x. Not exactly the first number that rolls off your tongue, but you know, at least we know it's correct. Okay. If you wanted to, you could then use the Pythagorean theorem. You could square that if you were a sucker for punishment, and then you know, leave this blank and then say, oh, that's going to equal five times five or twenty-five, and then figure out what it is. Or you can just do the same thing, you know, with the y that you did here a minute ago. You can go. 5 is to y as 2 is to 1. Or if you could just probably think, you could go, well, I mean, I know that the side across from the 90 degree angle is going to be twice what this side is. Or you could go, the 5 is going to be twice what this side is. So I just divide by 2, it's going to be 5 halves. Or, you know what, if you just want to do the ratio, go right ahead. We could go 5 is to y is the same thing as 2, and two, two to 1. So two times y equals five, and then divide by two, of course, that'll be five over two. And there you go, or s over two, if you're a slob when you write things. Okay, and that's it. Okay, this is the same thing as similar triangles. Only thing you need to do is memorize the 30, 60, 90 triangle ratios. Okay, all right, try A, B, and C, and uh, first, of course, try A, and then pause it, and we'll do it together. Okay, here is A, I'm gonna subtract there. And of course, I'm gonna change every single term, Z minus two and then negative three M. So the minus three M turns into positive three M and everything is over Z 
minus 2. By the way, it is possible that you will see an answer in the back of your book sometime that looks like this. You can probably guess what I'm about to say here. But look at that fraction here. What's another way of writing that fraction that is perfectly correct? Yeah, I mean, everything's different, right? The, the back of the book, they might have done this, and they went, oh, I'm going to change this to match that. If they do that, fine. Then every single thing would be different. In other words, on the bottom, you would have negative z plus 2, right? That's a z. And on the top, you'd have a negative 1 minus 3m. That'd be your answer. If that's the answer in the back of the book, obviously every single term in that fraction, numerator and denominator, are, are, are switched, so you're fine. Okay. All right, do b. Pause it and do b. All right, heck with this. I'm changing the first one. I hate neg all that negative garbage there. So the, this one's going to be x uh, plus 4. And that means this is going to be negative 3x minus 7. And then I'm adding that to, you know, x minus 7 over x plus 4. Okay, so we got one denominator, x plus 4. And then a negative 3x plus an x will be negative 2x. And negative 7 minus a 7 will be negative 14. And again, if all four of those terms are signs are different, you're square. Leave it. Okay. All right. Pause it now and try C. Okay. Um, boy, do I hate this jazz. Okay. When it's all funky looking like that. I'm just going to write. Oh, I'll, I'll just draw myself a nice little triangle over here that kind of matches it. Okay. All right. So this is the 30. So across the 30 will be the 1. All right. Across the 90 will be the 2. Across the, of course, this is 60 degrees, we know. Across this will be the square root of 3. We want you to find A and B. Let's work on A first, all right? So we can go A to 7 is 1 to square root of 3. Or, you know, A to 1 is 7 to square root of 3, all right? Let's do it. I'll just go A to 7 is, that to that is, 1 to the square root of 3. All right? 8 to 7, 1 square root of 3. Okay, so let's do this. We've got square root of 3 times a equals 7. Oh, boy. They stuck it to us. Look at this. What are you going to what are you gonna have to do to find a first? Divide by square root of 3, right? Okay, you divide by the square root of 3, right? So to that, so a is equal to 7 over the square root of 3. Remember, in algebra, we don't leave irrational denominators, okay? You have to rationalize the denominator. So, we're going to have to chunk that and go u times the square root of 3 and then u times the square root of 3. So, we get 7 the square root of 3 and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, of course, is just 3. So, there is our a. Got it. Okay. All right, for the b, we're going to simply give up because we can't, oh no, we can do it. Okay, we'll try it, okay. So same thing here, we'll just do, you know, seven to b is square root of three to two. So seven over b is square root of three over two. So, oh, I see some ugliness again, possibly. Yep, I think I see it, okay. So the square root of three times b equals 14. Ooh, goody. I'm dividing by the square root of three, dividing by the square root of three. And that is just grody, as they said in 1984. So I've got to rationalize a denominator. The square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. So I got my 14. I got my square root of 3. I got my 3 there. And then I got that. I'm very happy, of course. Anytime you want to, if you're adventurous, you can do the Pythagorean theorem by finding that last, to, to find that last one. So anyway. All right. See you guys next time. Have a good day.